Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of God selected as the message is taken from John chapter 21 beginning with verse 15. And when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you girded yourself and walked where you would. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish to go. This he said to show by what death he was to glorify God. And after this, he said to him, follow me. This is God's word. You may be seated. We can go back to Luke chapter 5. That's when Jesus first told the disciples to let down their nets after they had not caught anything all night long and they caught a big catch of fish and Peter was so startled and amazed that he fell at Jesus' knees and said, depart from me, Lord, I'm a sinful man. And Jesus told him right then and there, don't be afraid, henceforth you will be catching men. We can... Uh, Go to Matthew chapter 4 where Jesus said to Peter and to his brother, uh, follow me and I will make you to become fishers of men. But when we hear these words, follow me, whether it's at the beginning of Jesus' ministry to the disciples or whether it is at the end, following me requires that we remember what Jesus said in Matthew 16, 29 where he says, if any man would follow after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. What does it mean to deny yourself? Well, it certainly does mean fight against our selfishness. But it also means deny that you are who you once were. What am I talking about there? Well, think about the questions that Jesus asked Peter after that breakfast in silence. I love that, the, the tension that's there, you know. They brought this, this uh, net of fish ashore. There's Jesus and Peter in the charcoal fire, and there's fish already on it. These fish that are on the fire have been there. They, they aren't any of the fish that they just caught. These are different fish. Christ has provided them. And Jesus simply says to the whole bunch of them, come and have breakfast and he takes the bread and blesses and distributes it and the same with the fish but nobody asks him who are you they know that it is the Lord and that breakfast is a breakfast carried out in in silence and I think there's this great anticipation and this great excitement and wondering what is it that he's going to say to us why did he bring us all the way back here from Jerusalem all the way back up north to Galilee, what is it that he wants us to, to know? And they're all eating and waiting to hear what Jesus has to say. At the end of the breakfast, Jesus talks to Peter. He says, Peter, do you love me? Now, in Greek, the word that Jesus uses is agape, meaning, do you have, Peter, a, a perfect, sacrificial, devoted high love for me a perfect love for me do you love me perfectly and Peter's answer is Lord I love you like a friend he says I phileo you I filio you which means the love that one has for another between friends why isn't it that Peter answers back using the same word. Yes, Lord, I love you sacrificially. I love you devotedly. When the answer is obvious, Peter knows he's a sinner. And he knows that his devotion to the Lord is imperfect. He knows that he has failed repeatedly in his efforts to try to serve God. 
to serve Jesus. And so he doesn't lay claim to any kind of high, perfect love. His love for Jesus, the best that he can offer him is a human love of a friend. Jesus doesn't quibble with him and say, why don't you answer me that you love me like I love you? Because God's love for us is agape love. It's sacrificial and devoted. It's perfect. But Jesus doesn't give Peter a hard time because he doesn't answer back, why don't you agape me like I agape you? Why don't you devote yourself to me like I've devoted my... He doesn't do that. Instead, he just tells Peter, feed my lambs. They've been waiting ever since Easter to hear Jesus say, feed my lambs. Why is that important? Because the faith that we have by which we are saved, the faith by which we live, has come to us through God's word. In Matthew 4, 4, Jesus says, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Our life in faith in Christ is nourished by the word of God. So naturally, Jesus would say to Peter, feed my lambs. Now in saying feed my lambs, he's speaking of the church's responsibility to educate children. And this begins with fathers and mothers educating their children in their homes, teaching their children the Lord's Prayer, teaching their children the commandments, teaching their children the Apostles' Creed, the basic five parts of the catechism, and it continues with parents bringing their children to Sunday school and making, taking advantage of all of the uh, offerings the church has for educating children in the Word of God. We've created a Christian day school so that children can be educated in Christ all week long. Now this, this command, feed my lambs, Jesus sets forth as being the preeminent work that he wants the disciples now to do. Christian education, the number one work of the church. It's not feeding the, the poor, it's not healing the sick, it isn't anything else, it is teaching. Teach the word. For by the teaching of God's word, the kingdom of heaven comes. The Holy Spirit, attending God's word, brings faith to us. And by that faith, we're saved for eternal life. Naturally, Jesus would say, feed my lambs. That's not the end of it. Then Jesus says to Peter, Peter, do you love me? Meaning again, perfectly. Do you love me with a sacrificial Agape, devoted, holy, high love. Peter won't claim such a love. He knows he's a sinner. And he says, Lord, you know that I love you as a friend. I filio you. Jesus said, tend my flock. Tend my flock. Tend my sheep. Meaning, not only do we want, does, I, do, does Jesus want us to educate children in the word of God, he wants the shepherds of the flock to look over the flock, to watch over them, to make sure that they're cared for, to make sure that the dangers that are out after them can be headed off. 